Hi, I'm Karthik Shankar, and I'm going to be talking about my work at the Center for Ecological Sciences. My work ranges across a variety of taxa uh, in tropical biodiversity hotspots, uh, and I work on a number of questions relating to their ecology and evolution. The main research themes in my lab uh, range from uh, ecological and historical biogeography, focusing on diversity and distribution. Uh, we also work on the community ecology and behavior of mixed species foraging groups. Um, and uh, I've been working on marine turtle biology and conservation for about three decades now, and that has led to some recent interests in marine ecology. Our lab um, is all of peninsular India, uh, sometimes extending to the northeast, uh, but we focus uh, much of our work in the Western Ghats. Uh, and we also carry out a lot of work in both terrestrial and marine ecosystems in the Andaman and Nicobar Islands. Our approach ranges from uh, field work. Uh, we carry out um, extensive field work, uh, uh, both collecting animals, uh, um, field observations, tromping across forests, grasslands, wading through streams, and when necessary, uh, going underwater as well. Uh, we do a lot, lot of lab analysis, uh, including uh, uh, molecular genetic analysis, for uh, example, for building phylogenetic trees. And we use a range of uh, uh, statistical uh, and theoretical uh, models uh, to understand patterns in nature. Uh, the first basket of our work uh, is uh, uh, in the realm of uh, biogeography. Uh, and we'll start out uh, trying to understand how to deconstruct diversity. Now for several hundred years, um, from the time of Linnaeus and Darwin, naturalists have been wondering what causes diversity? And more specifically, why do some areas within the tropics have such high diversity? Uh, we use a general conceptual framework to understand this. Uh, uh, at the center of our puzzle is uh, species geographic range, uh, which can be influenced by uh, evolutionary origins, where species came from, uh, how they got there or dispersal, and once you get there, uh, you have to stay alive. So the influence of both biotic and abiotic factors um, in persistence, uh, all of these determine species geographic range. And if you stack up the geographic range of many species, you get patterns of species richness. Now, uh, in our work on historical biogeography, we've uh, treated them, uh, our, our uh, questions as two detective stories uh, regarding the name shortfall or a lack of knowledge of uh, species identity uh, or and the uh, volition shortfall, which is our lack of knowledge of species distribution, both of which you need to understand to understand uh, to to uh, uh, infer what the causes of diversity patterns are. We use a large scale sampling framework. Uh, so, for example, in our work on the Western Ghats, we uh, have spent the last 10, 15 years uh, sampling across the entire Ghats. Uh, we divided it into 14 massives or 14 mountain ranges, each of which we sampled across ele entire elevational gradients, uh, across habitat gradients and rainfall gradients and so on. Uh, and uh, this work, uh, focusing on frogs, lizards and snakes, has led to some uh, fascinating insights. Uh, one of my students worked on bush frogs and not only discovered nine new species, but also that uh, the southern and the northern clades uh, on the two sides of the Palgat Gap uh, form uh, very distinct evolutionary clades uh, and uh, uh, also uh, have different uh, uh, adaptive signatures. So you get more grassland adapted frogs in the northern clade and more canopy ad adapted bush frogs in the southern clade. Uh, another student's work on uh, wrinkled frogs uh, showed similar patterns with two clades on, on either side of the Palgat Gap. Um, but our continuing work uh, also revealed a sister lineage, uh, which turned out to be so deeply divergent that uh, we treated it as, an, as a sister genus uh, uh, called Astrobatricus. Now, the fascinating thing here is that Nyctobatricus has over 40 species and Astrobatricus has just one, uh, even though these have both been evolving for tens of millions of years. Um, similarly with, with vine snakes, uh, several new species, but also a deeply divergent uh, 
uh, lineage, a new genus from the southern Western Ghats, which also underscores what a fascinating, uh, what fascinating evolutionary history uh, resides in, in in that part uh, uh, of these of this very ancient mountain chain. Uh, going from uh, his, his historical patterns to contemporary uh, patterns, we also study large-scale uh, spatial or macroecological patterns. Uh, and uh, traditionally, patterns in species richness have been examined along latitudinal, altitudinal, and bathymetric gradients. Uh, and uh, uh, ecologists have uh, uh, examined mechanisms such as environmental uh, factors, including temperature, precipitation, uh, the species area curve, uh, historical factors, geography, and so on, in influencing these patterns. Uh, so building on our historical biogeographic work, we also looked at, at distribution patterns of uh, frogs and lizards to understand what drives these distributions and eventually what drives diversity. Uh, and we've carried out similar work uh, at the scale of the Western Ghats uh, for both uh, birds as well as plants. Um, now, in addition to our uh, ecological analysis um, and molecular genetic analysis, we also use simulation models. So we've modeled the distribution of our, our movement of, of organisms in that space and uh, try and understand how factors such as dispersal and environment might combine to produce the patterns that we see in nature. Um, as an aside, one of my students also studied marine mollusks, where, which gave us an opportunity to examine these questions in marine ecosystems, uh, which is cool because in addition to uh, habitat and life history traits uh, and the influence of these on uh, population uh, genetic structure, uh, you can also look at the influence of passive dispersal through ocean currents, uh, therefore the impacts of oceanography on marine population connectivity. That brings me to my second basket. Uh, we've studied uh, uh, mixed species foraging groups. And um, uh, these are essentially uh, groups composed of uh, different species of animals that move together and forage together and are widely known in uh, ungulates, marine mammals, uh, reef fish, but have probably been studied most extensively in birds. Uh, in general, species form groups for safety of a food, so uh, safety in numbers through a variety of mechanisms, uh, which is essentially an anti-predator uh, uh, driver for these groups, uh, but also uh, to access resources. Uh, we ask similar questions with mixed species groups. Why do species join them? Uh, why are some species joined while uh, others uh, are, are uh, uh, follow species more often? Uh, who hangs out with whom. So for example, with birds, with uh, full wetters and warblers are intraspecifically gregarious and maybe are, are, are usually followed by other species, uh, species such as drongos, which may provide vigilance benefits, uh, uh, usually follow other species. Uh, we've studied similar patterns in, in fish. Uh, shoaling fish such as surgeon fish form these large um, shoals where there is no leader uh, or follower uh, whereas uh, others such as goat fish are usually followed by ras, which are looking for foraging benefits. Uh, so our questions with mixed species groups get to the ecology and evolution of these groups. My own interest in marine turtles, which I started working on as a uh, as an undergraduate uh, uh, in the in Madras Christian College, uh, stems from. Uh, my interest in, in sea turtles, uh, but has extended to the other, other marine megafauna now. Uh, for the last 15 years, we've studied Olive Ridley turtles in Orissa, where we've monitored mass nesting events as well as solitary nesting and offshore uh, aggregations. Uh, we also look at sex ratios uh, as the sex of uh, sea turtles, uh, hashlings is determined by temperature and therefore climate change could impact sex ratios over time. Um, and um, so uh, our, our work there is long-term monitoring of various uh, uh, parameters for these populations, uh, uh, both to understand uh, their ecology, but also for, for conservation. Uh, we study leatherback turtles in the, in the Andaman Islands also for over 10 years now. Uh, and uh, this is our five-star uh, field camp at West Bay in Little Andaman Island where we have wonderful facilities such as no internet and no mobile network, uh, but a wonderful field team uh, and uh, great food. Um, 
we monitor these turtles, uh, both uh, nesting as well as uh, we track them using telemetry and we've been able to track them across the entire Indian Ocean. Uh, uh, some of the turtles that we tagged went to Western Australia and the other others to uh, Mozambique and Ma Madagascar. Uh, more recently, we've studied green turtles in Lakshadweep, uh, sea snakes in Maharashtra, and uh, my interests um, have also uh, now extended to uh, sharks and rays, thanks to uh, many of the researchers that I've worked with. Um, much of the work on marine megafauna is with um, is in collaboration with colleagues uh, and researchers at uh, Duction Foundation. Now, all of this has led to a more abiding interest in marine ecology, and uh, uh, much of that focus right now is on the Andaman and Nicobar Islands, where we're working with a number of collaborating institutions, both within and outside India. Uh, we use a large framework where we're trying to understand the effect of both global processes uh, such as climate change as well as local stresses such as fishing to understand these human natural coupled marine ecosystems uh, and we're, we're trying to understand both social uh, aspects as well as ecological processes uh, top down and bottom up uh, to, uh, uh, un to, to get a handle on resource management and conservation planning to ensure the long-term survival of marine ecosystems. Now the large projects in this uh, basket are um, one of them is the Long-Term Ecological, Ecological Observatories Program of MOEF, uh, led by, uh, by the action uh, of which we're a part, uh, uh, also an, a project funded by IISC, which is allowing us to um, explore new, uh, new themes uh, in our work, uh, uh, particularly inter interdisciplinary themes uh, in these islands. Uh, we've also in initiated a project on automated reef monitoring structures, which was a project initiated by the Smithsonian at a global scale. Uh, and these are essentially these are plates or little uh, marine critter or condominiums that you put in the water and then uh, remove and after after many months and identify species, uh, some visually, but mostly by metabolic coding. Now, all of this work uh, really was possible only because of a very large number of students, researchers, postdocs, lab assistants, lab managers, and, and, and staff and, and colleagues uh, um, and collaborators over many years. And I'm very, very grateful to all of them, uh, as well as to our many uh, donors um, uh, who have provided funding support and uh, uh, to the government, particularly forest departments that's uh, uh, provided us access and permits for our research. Uh, as you can see, uh, we're a lab that uh, likes to have fun both uh, uh, in uh, urban settings as well as in the field. Uh, we also thoroughly enjoy our conversations with each other even when we can't remember what was last spoken about. And uh, with that, I'm going to leave you with my webpage and my email address. Do get in touch if you'd like. Uh, thank you very much. <laughs>